Ah, Borada sent my uh Durno Dwini Bod uh Thanks. Yeah, we needed um a Facebook Messenger for that. Uh uh sit my dunno dwini bod uh Ruan Idu E, uh Creson Vinkartov Murn. Uh now in Sysneg and now in English. Good morning. How's your day been, my strange people? Uh I'm Ruan and welcome to my spooky home. And, oh yeah, we're having another uh, toilet goth um, thing today because it's been a while. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, for some reason, I don't know, for some reason, like, it's the whole hashtag toilet goth is still funny to me. It's been something like three or four years since uh, uh, Joe, um, A-Tac, I-Tac, A-Y-T-A-K-K, -K, um, it's been like three or four years since he launched that, and I still find it hilarious. I mean, the the joke has like ceased being funny to everybody else, but I will still sometimes post to Instagram with hashtag toilet goth, but that's another story for another time. So I was watching some Chris Fleming videos. You all know Chris Fleming. If you don't, uh, just do a search on YouTube. Chris Fleming polyamorous, right? Like that is his like breakthrough hit. That's the one that took the internet by storm something like seven years ago. And it's still funny. And it's one of those things that's funny because it's true. And, like, as the former half of a board game couple, uh, that would be myself and best ex, um, I'm, I've got mixed feelings about being regarded as having a more menacing than vibe than poly couples, but as I said to, uh, somebody, I think it was on Facebook, like, two minutes ago, the, the, uh, the, the, my, my, uh, my form, my former teenage edgelord self, probably revels in that notion, but the reality of my 42-year-old self um, just really wants some people to stop over and play my favorite German tile placement board game called Crows. It is about, you know, it is uh, for two to four players or in teams of two. It works pretty well with um, two or three teams of two or um, for single players. At least that's my personal experience. Hi, cat! Um, hi. Um, scooch. Scooch your butt. Scooch your butt. There we go. We're not looking at Renau's butt tonight. No, we're not. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you play, you, you play crows, and you place shiny things, and you move shiny things around the board, and, you know, it's, uh, the, uh, the setting, at least going by the tiles on the, you know, for the, that make up the board that you place, and the box, the setting is one of those uh, German woodland cemeteries, which are just amazing. But I digress. So anyway, um, un underneath that, I was watching that music video again, and underneath there, it was suggested, like, a couple other Chris Fleming songs, or, you know, otherwise videos of his, which included a video entitled Jimmy Buffett. And that reminds me of a story that I don't think I've shared in, uh, if I have shared it, it was in a stream ages ago, and, but I know for a fact I haven't upload, I haven't made an upload of it, right? So, here we go with that. So, my Jimmy Buffett story. So, when I was in eighth grade, the, um, the social studies teacher I had that year, mm, Excuse me. We're going to go by her first name because it's common enough and, you know, just like to preserve some sense of anonymity because it's easier to, you know, refer to a name rather than like say out, you know, outright, you know, my my social studies teacher, my social studies teacher, right? Okay, so uh, so Ms. Chris, Ms. Christine, that actually goes really well with the fact that I got <laughs> that I got springboarded onto this from a Chris Fleming video, right? So, Ms. Christine, and it was Ms. M. M. S. Um, um, I know, uh, I, I know, uh, sometimes she put it down as Miss, even though she was in her 40s, because she had never been married. In fact, like, there were a couple rumors going around that she might have been, because, you know, this was, like, the early 90s, so, you know, people, uh, like, some kids were whispering that she might have been a lesbian, but she was not. In fact, we all figured out that she was not on this day I speak of. Now, some quick uh, background that is important to the story, right? So, 
Uh, Ms. Christine, she was one of those teachers that kind of overdressed, right? Like, she wore, like, a, you know, a very, like, I mean, obviously she had a few different ones, but it was a, it, usually a skirted suit. Um, every so often it would be slacks. Um, even on Fridays, a lot of teachers would go, like, extra casual, right? I mean, but, uh, I mean, most teachers at public schools wear something somewhat casual to, um, to school, but it's, like, you know, more like a, more like a business casual, right? So, um, and then they go, like, extra cad, you know, like, like, a like, like regular casual on Fridays, right? But no, no, like when, when, uh, when Miss Christine would participate in casual Fridays, which was like maybe once a month, th that it would be like, you know, like, like a blouse and a skirt, but with, but with that, but like not suit, right? Like, so not a suit or she'd just like take off the suit jacket and would have like a long sleeve blouse with her, um, with her, um, suit skirt right and she'd like <laughs> so yeah like she was she was very professional like dressed far more professionally than um than most teachers that i've known especially since public you know especially since i entered public school in seventh grade right oh gosh even the lay teachers at catholic school were you know like like that's i wasn't too surprised to see that you know, uh, to see Miss Christine the first time, like a lot of other kids thought she was a bit more stuffy than I did. But then again, like I said, I had previously attended Catholic school where even the lay teachers, like, you know, they don't have to wear the, I mean, obviously, since they're not, you know, sisters, nuns, right? They don't have, they don't wear the habit, but, you know, it is, re especially at a Felician school like St. Adalbert was, um, you know, it's recommended that, uh, you know, like something a bit more, you know, like, you know, professional looking, right? So, where was I going, right? So, um, a thing and a thing, right? Um, so yeah, Miss Christine, she was, <laughs> you know, she was, she was very professional, just very professionally every day, like had that, that, like, I swear she had to go like get her hair trimmed, like exactly every four weeks, right? Like her page boy haircut, which is like, you know, like a little like longer version of a bob, right? You know, like it ends like around here, you know, between here and here, whereas a bob usually ends up at about ear length, right? So like, you know, she came, you know, she, she had that perfect page boy haircut, um, you know, very light fringe, you know, you know, to look a little more her age, right? Um, or, you know, pfft. Um, because, uh, yeah, she was in her early 40s this year, right? So, um, and she's one of those PE te teachers who would still, at least as of the early 90s, would still take points off for penmanship. And this was social studies class, right? So, um, because like I said, well, you know, like I said, it was the early 90s, so we, for the most part, our papers were handwritten. And like I said, she would take points off for penmanship. Like if you, if your handwriting stunk, you were lucky to, <laughs> you were often, you were often considered lucky to like get through her class with a B plus, right? So, um, you know, just like I said, penmanship, right? So, um, so like the one time we, the first time we ever saw Ms. Christine cut loose was when she, um, decided to show off her weird talent to, um, it was one of those, like, half days where everything was just, like, very, I mean, yeah, we still had to, like, bring in homework, even though it was a half day, and we still had, and she still made us, like, act like it was, like, a real class day, but, um, she decided just, you know, because it was a half day, might as well cut loose a little bit and show off the fact that, um, you know, like she, uh, she could write backwards and upside down in cursive or joined handwriting, right? Like not just print, but you know, joined cursive handwriting. Like I said, backwards and upside down. This was her neat talent, right? Whereas mine is, I can guess usually within a year, the um, when a movie was released based on the font of the original um, title cards, right? <laughs> you know, right right in the middle of, you know, like, 
uh, the original title cards in the opening credits, right? That That's my talent. That's my stupid talent that's going to do me no good in life. But it's kind of entertaining if you think about it. But anyway... So Ms. Christine, like the other time, like the time she cut really loose, right? The one time we all saw her cut really loose. We come into class and, you know, of course we knew people who were in her, you know, were in her class, you know, like the period before ours. Uh, but like nobody said anything about it, right? Like this was one of those things that you just like, the, the fact that like there was like nobody like kind of chatting about it ahead of time this kind of like if you think about it it kind of like really sunk in that this was something that all the other students acknowledged that ha it, it was a thing that just truly had to be seen to be believed right and you know how like eighth graders will talk about anything right like oh yeah Susie took a shit today I don't know, let's talk about that oh my gosh it stunk up the entire like I could smell it in the boys room right right okay so like so yeah, like the fact that a bunch of eighth graders were just like keeping mum about this, it was just like, oh my gosh, this was something that was just so weird, right? So, and you'll probably see where this is going since, uh, you know, like the, uh, the thing I springboarded this off of. So we get into her class and so, like I said, always the professional, she had a literal like, you know, coat and hat stand behind her desk in her class where she would like, you know, put her coat, often her hat, and this day, she had hanging up on there a straw hat with a little, um, you know, fake parrot sitting on top of it. She was wearing, like, this bright, like, you know, late 80s, very early 90s fluorescent neon Hawaiian shirt. And she was wearing, you know, goddamn, like, you know, um, denim shorts that came, like, uh, just below the knee, right? No, no, no. She was wearing a denim skirt that came just below the knee because that's how, <laughs> that's how she was, right? Like, like she very seldom wore, she very seldom wore slacks with her suits, right? Usually a skirted suit. Yeah, she was wearing a denim skirt. And, um, and as we all sit down, we're all just like kind of silently staring at this woman. This woman, like, and wearing like some kind of, it wasn't like, you know, like even the fake um, plastic or silk, you know, like Hawaiian lays. This was just some, uh, I, th it had all these gaudy baubles on it. I think a couple were margarita glass ornament, you know, margarita glass ornaments, you know, like stuff. Uh, I think she, she possibly had cheeseburger earrings. Um, <laughs> right. Um, and so, like, we all sit down and we're all just staring at this woman that we've known for, at that point, at least, yeah, I want to say about six months. Like, we had seen this woman for the past, like, you know, five, maybe six months coming to class. And, you know, of course, this is eighth grade, so, like, many people had seen her for the previous two years. I had seen her at least, you know, like, passing by in the hallway for, like, the previous year. Um, just... And she's wearing a suit every day to class, right? Like, if she's doing, like, if she's doing casual Fridays, it is, you know, the skirt from her suit with a blouse, you know, with a long sleeve blouse and no suit jacket over it, right? Like, that is her casual Friday. And today, she's dressed like this. She's dressed in a denim skirt, like, just past the knee. She is wearing, like, you know... Like those little, like, um, there's like, like hush puppy brand, like, you know, moccasin style, um, slip on flat shoes, right? She's wearing, like I said, like a denim skirt and this loud ass Hawaiian shirt with these, with this, you know, goddamn bauble fole thing. There's this goddamn straw hat that, you know, like, looks like the nacho, uh, it's got about the same dimensions as the nacho hat from that episode of The Simpsons, right? Um, but, you know, it's straw, and it's got this fake parrot on it, and it's probably got other, you know, like, little baubles and ornaments on the other side as well. Fuck if I know, right? But, like, we're all just staring at her, and finally, you know, she says, well, let's see, before we take attendance, does anybody have any questions? Because, you know, like, this is seriously, like, the quietest she, she has ever seen us, right? 
and somebody finally, you know, like raises their hand and says, um, y yeah, um, it it's about your outfit. And she says, well, um, well, if, if you want me to be perfectly, uh, honest, I'm a bit of a parrot head. My boyfriend and I are going to, uh, go see Jimmy Buffett in Detroit, and beforehand, we're meeting up with a couple of other parrot heads we saw on, uh, you know, we met at last year's cruise. I guess Jimmy Buffett was already, like, doing cruises in the early 90s, but then again, I'm not surprised, right? She's like, yeah, so we, like, we met a few other parrot heads on last last summer's cruise, and we're meeting up with them in Detroit. Apparently, they're local there, and we're going to see him in concert shortly afterward, and he's coming to pick me up right after I punch out here, and it just seemed a lot more practical to come to to come to work today and she says it as work right so like we're thinking school she says it just seemed a lot more practical to come to work today dressed for the concert because of the time we're meeting up with our friends in detroit and of course the commute you know from lenaway county to detroit at the right and <laughs> somebody else asks what's a parrot head again? And like, she just explained the Jimmy Buffett thing. And she says, and she says, I really don't want to get into why Jimmy Buffett fans are called parrot heads, but that's, that's what it is. We're, we're diehard fans of Jimmy Buffett. And this is one of those things that happens in school that happens in like junior high, high school, even elementary. One of those things that happens and was just like one of those things that you know is probably not going to happen with any other class she has, right? It's not going to happen any other day, like for any years previous or any years afterward, right? Like she probably retired never having never having had come to school to work for her you know never having had come to that you know punched in as a teacher again she never once she probably never again came to school like dressed in her parrot head gear <laughs> because you know like the concert was like on a thursday or a friday that that one year right and of course it's one of those things that just because you had to be there like nobody in my class um, you know, definitely like not, you know, the period I had her, nobody else in the eighth grade class who had her ever spoke of it again. The kids that were in our eighth grade class who didn't have her for social studies, because, you know, the, like the school wasn't that tiny, but still like if they didn't have her for social studies, like, yeah, they saw her and like we tried, like some of us would try to explain it to them but there is still something like you could tell just like by their reaction to this story that there was a something that they just knew they weren't going to understand because you know like yes while they saw miss christine you know like in the hallways and they knew she had a reputation for being like ultra professional like like i said like she dressed off as casual right for you know for working as a school teacher they they knew this about her and of course like i said like that was the day like it was finally confirmed to everybody that she wasn't a lesbian she just hadn't met anybody she felt was worth marrying cuz you know this was like 1992 something i don't know so yeah like she just hadn't met anybody she felt worth what she felt was worth marrying until about that age and i don't even think they got married that year i don't remember if they got married at all I might want to look that up later, but yeah, yeah, like sometimes in our lives, there's just, there's that one thing that happens, that one thing that happens, and it has to be experienced, right? And if you weren't there for it, you're probably not going to get it in the same way. Everybody else in, in eighth grade just like doesn't really speak of this again, because it's just, it was just like, yeah, yeah, that was just the day that Miss Christine came in and outed herself to all of the junior high that she's a parrot head and it really had to be seen to be fully appreciated for what it was so uh 
So yeah, that's it. That's today's Toilet Goth story time. Um, not a complaint list. I'm not going to complain about that. P kids, be whoever you are. Do whatever you want to do just so long as you don't hurt anybody. And remember, kids, I am your friend. If you caught the reference that was from, oh my gosh, I am so fucking showing my age. Um, I'm probably showing myself as a little bit older than I am, honestly, just cause, but then again, my parents were pushing 40 when I was born and I have strong opinions about that. But, um, as we do on, ah! as we do here in YouTube land, uh, if you feel, if you feel you want to encourage my continued descent into utter madness, uh, there should be a link tree thing, L I N K tr.ee slash ruan 1334 r-u-a-d-h-a-n 1334 uh miltree tree bedwar um and um you can uh find my music on bandcamp spotify etc uh you can um mm, you can go stalk me on instagram and twitter and um like my music page on Facebook, check out my uh, show on WFKU, usually Tuesdays, um, 10 to 1, uh, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And uh, uh, if you, if you like some people, have more dollars than cents, because I'm old, right? Uh, if you have more dollars than cents, feel free to donate um, either one time via the paypal.me link or... Um, on a monthly basis, because y you just, you just have no use for that $5, right? Um, but yeah, if you donate a minimum of $3 a month for a minimum of three months, you'll get a WFKU sticker that I designed myself, right? Uh, so yeah, um, all of that happy horse shit, like I said, like Patreon, PayPal, all of that stuff. Uh... Aside from that, speaking of Patreon, thanks so much to my uh, current Patreon um, patrons. Uh, last I checked, we've got uh, Ali Valkyrie. She's a polytheist blogger and uh, anti-capitalist um, anarcho-socialist um, activist, um, also an American expat living in Rennes, France. Uh, and um, very excellent work. Um, go check her out. She's uh, one of the people behind the Gods and Radicals blog. Um, then uh, there's uh, Susie Bika. She's my she's a good old friend of mine. Oh gosh, almost twenty years, isn't it? Uh, she's a uh, Canadian comic strip art um, comic strip artist and other visual artist. She's done uh, she's done some uh, gallery shows. She's uh, she's been commissioned by uh, Green Party Canada to illustrate some pamphlets. Very wonderful person does a lot of really wrong uh th does a lot of fan art with a heap wrongness as well oh my gosh <laughs> but then again that's why we love her right and of course uh karen l who's just a wonderful sweet lady who found me on youtube and decided i'm at least somewhat entertaining uh other than that um be sure to wear your sunscreen and otherwise take very good care of yourselves Bats and kisses, Nosta Achwil.